wanted to stone her to death. And there are still people being stoned overseas. And they're trying to bring this into America now. I say, it's okay. It's okay. Islam's fine. Let them come on in. But do you know what some real law believes? They still believe in picking stones up like this, about this size or bigger, and stoning somebody to death out of anger, out of, I mean, actually a lot of it's out of ignorance, but most of it's out of bitterness. Because they don't know the Lord Jesus. And we need to pray for them. Believe me, you women in America do not want Islam to come in. No, we so don't. Sharia law <laughs> is tough. And American women have a little bit of, I don't know what to call it, I better stay out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but they ain't going to be told what to do. Am, am, I, am I telling the truth? Amen. So you might want to stand up against that and say, you know, I don't think y'all want Sharia law. Y'all keep y'all's money and y'all's law to yourself. And we'll keep Jesus over here. Amen. Amen. I don't know why it went off from there, but I believe the Lord's trying to show us something. <laughs> But the main fact is that I commend the Pharisees for at least bringing her to Jesus. If Mary, this is Mary, if she had never been brought to the feet of Jesus, she would have never been delivered. She could have continued on into her thing until it just killed her, until it brought all kinds of disease, until one day Jesus might have been crucified already and they might have pulled her out and really stoned her to death. But she was stoned in a hedge of protection. Oh, that's where you want to be thrown, people, in the midst of the anointed and at the feet of Jesus. And, and, I, and, and thank God, thank God someone was telling me back then what I was doing was wrong. When I was doing some things wrong, they did point it out. And it made me ask the Lord, Lord, can you help me in this? Please help me come out of this. And He will. He'll deliver you. He can deliver you today. Amen. Praise God. He's got the power. Because you're in the midst of the anointing and at the feet of Jesus. Every time we open up this Word of God, it's the Word of God that is the anointing. It's not the man. It's not the preacher. Oh, he's got something on him. No, it is God's Word because Jesus Christ is the one that is anointed. That's why you don't follow man. You follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's the one that can set you free. You go to the feet of Jesus and you watch what happens. Oh, they was trying to manipulate him. Verse 7, so when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He who is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, writing on the ground again. I bet he wrote grace. Amen. Verse 9, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, mm, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those your accusers? Has no man condemned you? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Amen. Jesus did not come to condemn us. No. Even though the Word of God comes forth and convicts us to bring us out and clean us up, it's not for condemnation unto Him. You see, that's what we get mixed up many times. We get condemnation and conviction mixed up. He didn't come to do that. He came to bring you life. I promise you, when He came to me, I was in the midst of my sin. I was in a dark, deep pit, and I couldn't even see my way out. And he sat there and talked to me gently and lovingly let me out of that dark pit. Amen. He didn't beat me over, over the head with a stone. He, he didn't tell me I was going to hell even. He said, Daryl, follow thou me. When he met his disciples on the road, what did he tell Matthew? Matthew was ripping his own people off. Man, Matthew was a thief, a tax collector. And he said, Matthew, follow thou me. He just said, Matthew, you're going to go to hell in that thing. <laughs> now, I know we, we, we love to do that. But he said, follow by me. That's the loving Jesus we serve. He is the loving God who is telling you now, even in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your troubles, you might have did something last night or said something that wasn't right last night, or you might have been thinking something that right, wasn't right last night. He's telling you now, I love you. Praise God that I went to the cross and gave my life to bring you out. Follow Thou me, is what he's saying. If you'll follow Jesus and his precepts, praise God, through the word of the living God, guess what will happen? You will have freedom, and you will have that life, and life more abundantly that he's come to give. Amen. He's not come to bring death, he's come to bring life to you, praise God. Oh, praise God.
praise the Lord. But think about this. The good thing about God's law is when it comes forth and points out the particular sin that you're in, even though they brought the law to Mary and they showed it was adultery. The awesome thing about God's Word that points out our sin is it brings us to a place of life. If we allow Jesus to give us that life through the cross. If we stay on in it, then it brings death. But if we come to Jesus and say, Jesus, help me, bring me out of this, it also shows us guilt. It shows us shame. And we ought to, at first, when we first come into the body of Christ, when we first come to Jesus, we ought to know that sin brings that guilt. The problem in the body of Christ these days is nobody feels guilt for their sin. Mm -hmm. There is no shame anymore. No. We come to church and say, God loves me anyway. He's going to let me stay this way. He loves you too much to keep you that way. There should be some guilt. There should be some shame until you come to Jesus and let Him wash you. And when He washes it, there's no more guilt. And there's no more shame because it's put under the blood. It's gone. But it put Mary to a place when all these people looking at her, the guilt and the shame that weighed in her heart caused her to reverence salvation. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't reverence the salvation they have because they never felt the guilt and shame. When you got people that don't even mention sin or mention the cross or mention the blood, they just mention that Jesus loves you. There's no guilt and shame. There's no law that comes forth to show you that you're wrong and you need a redeemer. You need a you need Jesus. We have to have that law to point that out so we'll reverence what Jesus has done for us. She reverenced him so much. Thank you. Turn with me to John chapter 12. I know I lied to you. We're going to do a little Bible service. Mm. Not much though. I think we're just going to do but she loved him so much, she realized, he has set me free. He has delivered me from the stone. He has delivered me from this adultery I was in. He has delivered. She loved him so much that she never 